As more organizations adopt low-code strategies and enable their citizen developers, governance and insight to the apps is critical. Today's guest shares her thoughts on one of our capabilities to help with that. Welcome to Breakpoint, the ServiceNow Developer Podcast. Here's your host, Chuck Tomasi. Hello, ServiceNow admins, builders, developers, and all of the curious individuals that I say with the utmost love and respect, welcome to or welcome back to Breakpoint, the ServiceNow Developer Podcast, where we bring you the latest tools, tips, and tradecraft to accelerate your career. In this episode, I have the wonderful pleasure of talking with Principal Inbound Product Manager, Brooks Hawkins. How are you today, Brooks? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me, Chuck. Super excited to be here. Well, I'm super excited to have you as well. Now, as per tradition, we always like to get to know our new people. You haven't been on Breakpoint before. I always like to get to know our guests. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I grew up in Houston, Texas and moved to the Chicagoland area in March of 2020. Um, and I live with my fiance and our three dogs. Hopefully they're going to be quiet during this recording. Um, but I joined ServiceNow in March of 2021. And before I joined ServiceNow, I was working for an oil and gas company where I mostly worked in business intelligence. But my most recent role there was implementing their citizen development program. So bringing all that IT admin knowledge, managing a citizen development program here to ServiceNow. Sounds like you're the right person for the right job. I hope so. So, Brooks, I understand you have an interesting path to service now. I do. Uh, so I got my undergrad degree at NYU in hotel management. And after getting that degree and working a little bit in the hotel and tourism industry, I decided it's not what I wanted to do. And so I went back to school and got my master's in computer science. What was the prompt that went you know, computer science looks much better than hotel. I mean, I'm trying to trying to make that connection yeah. in my mind. <laughs> uh, so when I kind of realized that hotel management wasn't what I wanted to do, my brother was a freshman in college trying to figure out what he wanted to do. Um, and my mom had him take the Johnson O'Connor aptitude test. And then I was like, hmm, maybe I should jump in on that. So I took that and they were... The results were definitely not hotel management, <laughs> definitely more something along the lines of computer science, engineering, something like that. All right, Brooks, given that interesting turn towards the more current, what did you want to be when you grew up? Part of the reason I went into hotel management is because when I was younger, we traveled a lot mm -hmm. as a family um, and I I'm a very detail oriented person. I started like noticing little things at hotels that are wrong or, you know, at airports, things like that. And I was like, Oh, I can travel and work in this industry, not fully understanding as a young kid, um, how hard it is to work in that industry. I'm the same way about the details. There's two pepper shakers and no salt shakers on that right. table. What's wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Who's responsible for this? Exactly. <laughs> and when you're not at work, what do you enjoy doing? Uh, so I'm a big sports fan, especially baseball. So right now, middle of baseball season, I'm a huge Astros fan. My fiance is a huge White Sox fan. So we're doing a lot of watching baseball, um, trying not to get into arguments when they're playing each other. Uh, and then we love to take our three dogs to the forest preserves around our house. And of course, I'm a big foodie, so love to go into Chicago and try all the restaurants there. It's a good food scene. And I know all too well the trials and tribulations of a mixed family when it comes to sports. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not, not always easy. Not going to go there, especially when they're playing each other. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. All right. Let's talk about what we came here to talk about today. App Engine Management Center. Let's start out for the listener. What is it? So App Engine Management Center is a tool for IT admins to manage all of their custom app development activities. So everything from evaluating app ideas to actually deploying those apps to production 
and monitoring them in production. Well, that sounds pretty straightforward. Uh, we, we came out with that in San Diego, if I remember right. That is correct. Okay, what new toys do we get in the Tokyo release? So with Tokyo Store 1, we have a new feature that we're calling App and Developer Visibility. Mm -hmm. So now from production, App Engine admins can log into AEMC, or App Engine Management Center, and they will have visibility into all of their developers in development that have e that have either the AES user role or the delegated development role. Um, and they'll also have visibility into all the custom apps that are being built in development and custom apps that have been actually published to production. So no longer need to log into different instances to get that information. We're going to bring it all to one place to give admins that full visibility. Brooks, was that one of those aha moments when you go, we've already got the capabilities to communicate between instances. We've been doing it for a long, long time with update sets to know, you know, here's how we get the status of this app here and that app there. Yeah, absolutely. And it was one of those things, I think, coming into service now uh, as a newer person that's not as familiar with how ServiceNow was configured that I was like, well, I don't want to keep logging as an IT admin. I don't want to keep logging into all these other instances to try to collect data, to try to manage all these different requests. I just want to go to one place and have it all at my fingertips. And that's really what we're going for with AEMC. I, as, as a person who's been using the platform for over 14 years, I totally get that. You just sort of fall into the habits and use what you're going to use. And when somebody new comes along, they say, why are you doing it that way? Is there an easier <laughs> way? You, you got to yeah. kind of get out of your comfort zone once in a while. And so thank you very much, Brooks, for <laughs> spotting opportunities like that. Yeah, no problem. Now, I understand we have configurable pipelines, too. Yes, we do. Can you explain what pipelines are and what it takes to set them up? Yeah, absolutely. So with the Rome release, we released the configurable pipelines. So that allows customers to set up as many pipelines as they need with as many environments in each pipeline. So the only thing that needs to be unique in a pipeline is the source environment or what we typically think of as a development instance. Okay. But from there, customers can build what makes sense for their company and their processes. Um, and so they would actually configure the pipelines through the pipelines and deployments guided setup. And once the admin sets up the pipeline, the developers will be able to submit deployment requests from AES. And those requests are going to be routed to production. So again, those App Engine admins can go, just go to AEMC and manage those requests directly in production. Um, and once they approve the app to go from development to say like a testing environment, we're gonna automatically run ATF suites and an instant scan suite. And we'll attach those results to the deployment requests, generate a new approval so the admin can actually review what are the, what are the results of all the tests that were run and then approve it again to go to say like a staging or production instance. And those suites are completely customizable as well. Uh, admins can go in and add their own test cases and instant scan checks to be run against any of their custom apps. Where was this when I was a kid? Right, yeah, it's pretty cool. Oh man, I mean, you, you set it up with guided setup, you can trigger ATF, you can do the instant scan, you can see where it is from one console like oh I, I please people if you're not using AEMC you should now, Brooks how are the flows and approvals configured in those in general how are pipelines configured so the pipelines are using flow designer and the CI CD spoke okay and the service now app repo so on our deployment request we have an approval table and so we generate an approval after the app is installed on each instance in the pipeline. And then once you approve it, it goes to the next instance, generates a new approval until you get to production. 
So they could configure the approvals with conditionals to say, I don't need an approval for, you know, say this particular app or something, right? Right. So they could um, go in, they could take a copy of our flows for the pipelines, mm -hmm. modify them on the, what, how they want to handle approvals. And then we control which subflow runs. Okay for each environment type using a decision table. Yep. So then they would just need to modify the decision table to point to their new flow. And then that should work, but we're hoping to make it even easier so they can configure those dynamic approvals um, when they're setting up the pipelines or during a deployment. App Engine Management Center is installable through the store, correct? That is correct. Okay, I did do a little homework just before the podcast. <laughs> like yesterday, <laughs> I installed it. I looked around. I even made some corrections in the docs. And App Engine Management Center is included with an App Engine license. So this is not part of the standard platform. This is value-add stuff that you, know, you pay for. Yes, exactly. And it's actually only included in the standalone App Engine licenses. Um, so it's not included in the bundled App Engine licenses. Okay. So that's a specific distinction. Make sure that everyone knows how they can get their hands on AEMC. I'm going to put a big caveat on that. That's as of August 2022, September 2022 timeframe. Pricing changes, bundles yeah. change. So yep. if you're listening to this sometime in the future... Things may change. As always, standard disclaimer you'll get from me every time. Talk to your account team for more information on pricing and licensing. Exactly. I noticed a term in the documentation. It said controller instance. What is a controller instance? So the controller instance is the instance that controls the pipeline. So in order to get all the amazing features of pipelines and deployments and app engine management center, we recommend that the instance you use as a controller is your production instance. And once the pipeline is actually set up this way, all of your AES related requests are going to be routed to production and all of your notifications are going to be sent from production. So if someone is submitting a re collaboration request or deployment request from development, mm -hmm. you still get to manage that in production. And then you don't have the issues with notifications that it's blocked by, say, like a sub prod that doesn't send out notifications. Ah. It's going to go from production and you can make sure the notifications actually go out to all the right people. Hence the reason you want it on production. Are there any considerations for cloning? For cloning, um, App Engine Management Center is highly dependent on pipelines and deployments. Okay. So that's how we get all the data from development into production. Um, so we have data preservers set up on certain pipeline tables to make sure those are not overridden. Um, so it, the only part for cloning is that you want to make sure that, say, like, the ATF property that you're going to use on testing to make sure those ATF test cases run mm -hmm. is also set on production. So when you clone it down, you're not overwriting that property. But for AMC, it's really just make sure the pipelines is all set up correctly. Now I get to play my favorite sound effect, the safe harbor klaxon. Safe harbor. Safe harbor. Because this is the part of the show where I ask you, can you give us a hint of what's on the roadmap? Uh, I can definitely give you a little bit of a hint. Uh, so in November with Tokyo Store 2, uh, we are planning on bringing in app usage data. So now that an app is in production, you know you still have to monitor it and you want to know, is it actually being used and who is actually using it? Mm -hmm. So you'll be able to track all that in App Engine Management Center for any of your custom apps. And then in Utah, we're targeting some features around enhancing our pipelines. So things like integrating with CMDB and change management, as well as allowing admins to schedule production deployments um, and dynamic approvals. So it's not always up to the app, ad, app engine admin to approve everything. Maybe they want someone in the line of business to approve something or they want a tester to approve it to go to the next stage in the pipeline. And then we're targeting some features around data governance. 
giving admins more control over what data certain developers can use when building their apps and giving them more visibility into the data that's actually used in an app. Well then, Brooks, what words of advice do you have for new developers listening to all this wonderful information about App Engine Management Center, wishing I was one of them? Mostly the people using App Engine Management Center are are admins um, who could also be developers. But if you are a developer that's not an admin, make sure you're working with your admins. You know, they want to help you. They don't want to be the bottleneck. And we're hoping to give them more and more tools to help you get your apps built into production as quickly as possible. Wonderful stuff. Thank you for joining us today. Before we leave, can you let the listener know how they can get in touch with you? Yeah, they can find me on LinkedIn. So Brooks Hawkins, and that's Brooks with an S, not Brooke. Or they can email me at brooks.hawkins at servicenow.com. Okay, I'm curious to know, is there a Brooke Hawkins that gets a lot of your requests? <laughs> no, but uh, usually when I say Brooks, uh, people just assume like they misheard. Uh, so they just want to make sure that, that they know there's an S on there. Yeah, there's probably a Brooke Hawkins who's a flight attendant for Southwest or something good. Who right. are these service now people? <laughs> <laughs> <Right. laughs> well, again, thank you very much, Brooks. And thank you, wonderful listener, for joining us today. Don't forget to check out the other ServiceNow podcasts. We have plenty of them, and I think they're popping up like mushrooms more every day. You can find them all at community.servicenow.com under the resources menu or go to servicenow.com slash podcast. Subscribe to this or any of them for absolutely free to get them automatically delivered. You won't miss an episode. It's like a gift in your inbox every once in a while. You just, wow, there's a new breakpoint. Hooray, I'm going to go listen to it right now. Breakpoint is brought to you by ServiceNow. Executive producer is me, Chuck Tomasi. Video and captions appear courtesy of Earl Duque. To find out more about the ServiceNow developer program, I invite you to head over to developer.servicenow.com. Once again, thank you so much, Brooks, for all the wonderful information on AEMC today. Thanks for having me, Chuck. Please let us know what you think about this podcast. You can leave feedback or ask questions in the ServiceNow community. For more great information on ServiceNow development, check out the ServiceNow developer portal at developer.servicenow.com. Thanks for listening. Okay, then let me start out with something like this. Hello. This is usually like when the landscaping guy shows up. Who wants an extra treat if you shut up? We won't mention any of that on the podcast. How's that for an abstract? Before, wow, that, that's not even on there anymore. Uh, oops. <laughs> Let me try that. I got to stop being so animated. I just knocked a counterweight on my mic. Boom. Wow. That was just a big mental blank. Whoosh. At least you knew what you were talking about.